Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how fast to run your grinder. So the guys at Combat Abrasives who sponsor some of my videos uh, suggested recently that I do kind of a series of tips and tricks type videos on my Instagram account. You can check the links in the cards and descriptions for the address if you're interested. Anyway, they suggested that I start doing kind of some one minute tips and tricks types things. And I did the first few of these all of them having to do with how fast to run your belt grinder. So I'm going to kind of take three or four of those that I did recently and kind of mash them together here. Um, Anyway, you know, if you, if you poke around on the internet, you'll hear a lot of guys talking about, you know, how fast to run your variable speed belt grinder. Um, and sometimes they'll really get hung up on what your, the RPM of your motor is. That's really not important. The only thing that matters is how fast the belt is actually moving around the machine. So the faster the belt's moving, the faster you're going to grind, the more aggressively you're going to grind and so on. So, uh, the, the reason that RPM per se is not really important is that different grinders have different size drive wheels. The drive wheel, in case you're new to all this, is the little wheel that comes directly off of the shaft coming out of your motor. And as it spins, that drives the rotation of the belt. Now, a lot of belt grinders have a variable speed control. And so, you know, as a, as a new guy starting to run these things, the question is, well, how fast should I be grinding different kinds of things? With that in mind, a lot of guys are worried about running their grinders at the wrong speed, whatever that might be. So first thing, with a few minor exceptions, uh, the limitation on speed is not really the, your grinding belts or the components of your machine. You really can run it at whatever speed is comfortable to you. That's the final metric. If you can grind accurately at a particular speed, you shouldn't be too worried about what that speed is specifically. Uh, the one main exception I would make on that is if you're grinding on little tiny contact wheels like, you know, one inch contact wheels, two inch contact wheels. If you spin those too fast, sometimes you can burn out their bearings. But that's not a general worry for most kinds of uh, grinding that you're going to do. So as just a kind of general rule, you're probably going to want to go faster when you're roughing and slower when you're finished grinding. The finished grinding is the point at which the precision and the quality of your grinding is most at a premium. And so if you slow down a little bit, uh, that'll make it easier for you to make nice smooth grind lines and, you know, do all the kind of cool things that you're really trying to do as a custom knife maker. Also, obviously, if you've already heat treated the steel, you don't want to overheat it. That'll blow the temper and, you know, soften up the steel and basically ruin all your heat treating. So if running your rig slower keeps you from turning that edge blue, that's great. Then, you know, that's another good reason to slow down your, your rig. You can run them fast as long as you're careful, but it, it'll, it'll make it so you can be a little bit more calm when you're doing that. Bear in mind, one of the things that you're always thinking about in terms of grinding speed is that you're always trying to grind as fast as you can if you can do it effectively. You know, this is a practice makes perfect kind of thing. Um, so maybe you want to do what I do, which is just grind full blast all the time. But I bought my machine years and years ago and didn't buy variable speed control. So I have to actually switch out the drive wheels to slow it down or speed it up. Way too much hassle. So I just learned very early on to control it at real high speeds. You know, the whole point of having a variable speed control is that when you need it, you can slow it down. So don't necessarily do as I do. So that leads to the question of, well, how fast is my belt moving? You know, I said earlier that uh, how fast the, the motor rotates is not the important thing. So the question is, how do you calculate how fast that belt's moving? Well, the typical way that it's measured is SFM or surface feet per minute. So what we're going to do today is calculate surface feet per minute for your machine. If you have a variable speed control on your machine, it's going to tell you how many RPM it is. 
you do need to know that number in order to calculate surface feet per minute. If you don't have a variable speed machine, then look on the little plate on the side of your motor and that'll tell you how many RPM that your machine spins. Most commercial motors go at 1725 or 3450, but not all of them. You'll see other kinds. So um, check for that little plate. It'll say RPM 3450 or whatever. Next thing you'll need to do is measure the diameter of the drive wheel. As I said, that's the one that actually engages with your belt and makes it move. All right, so you can calculate surface feet per minute just with your phone. Basically, all you're doing is you're multiplying the diameter of the drive wheel by pi, which is 3.1415926, whatever. You can just round it off to 3.14. And then you multiply that times the RPM of the motor and then divide that by 12, which is, you know, 12 inches in, uh, in a foot. And so that changes it from the number of inches per minute to the number of feet per minute. Let me just do this. I'll show you how this works on my own machine. So 6.25 is the diameter of the wheel on my drive wheel on my machine. Then I'll multiply that by pi, 3.14. Then I'll multiply that by 3450, which is the speed of my motor. And then I'll divide that by 12. So the result I get is 5,642 SFM for my machine. So the general point out there is that as you're researching machines, you'll be able to find uh, many of them list what the surface feet per minute uh, that they do um, might be. And that'll tell you a little bit about how hard that machine is capable of grinding. It also gives you a metric you know, sometimes you'll hear people on the uh, on the interwebs talking about how fast they grind their stuff, you know, so now you can compare and see, you know, the, the way that they do it. And finally, if you are uh, using a variable speed control, then you'll know exactly how fast it's going at any given setting. And, you know, that might help you a little bit to uh, to grind better. Again, the general point I would make about all this is this is just a general measure that helps you out a little bit in terms of, you know, figuring out your own techniques. But at the end of the day, there's no magic number. Just because some dude on the internet does it at a certain speed doesn't mean that you need to. Find speeds that are comfortable for you. Like I said, in my case, you know, I run it wide open all the time. I practiced a lot over the years and now I know how to control it pretty well. Uh, if you have trouble controlling it at a particular speed, hey, just back off that speed a little bit and see if you can kind of get in control. All right, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com